So we're getting bored again because of the quarantine and the weather's not good. So we're going to do a third video on making sticks. Uh, I made one before on lashes. So we'll probably do a series of these. Uh, made lashes, so there's a video on how to do those. And then we went over the high level tips on making a yoke. So today we're going to talk about making a stick and some of the, uh, the ways that I do it. Um, I am, there's two rules of thumb when it comes to driving steers and oxen. Some people use a whip, so a stick and a lash, and some people use a goad stick. Probably the majority use a goad stick, especially in New England. I have um, much better luck with a whip and a lash, a stick and a lash, and I'll explain that as we go along. And the weather gets better, we'll do some tips on driving, and I'll show you how I drive my animals that way. But to me, there's a lot of advantages with driving with a stick and a lash compared to just a straight stick. So for now, we'll talk about a couple of the different styles that you might see out there. Um, these are the ones that I make. It's just a straight goad stick, basically, with a leather keeper on the end. Uh, I'll show you how to make one of these. There's um, also the twisted type of sticks, which I haven't made in a while, but I've got a couple started. This is not one that I made. Um, this is a very, very old twisted stick. Um, these are typically made out of hickory or white oak. This is a hickory twisted stick that Ray Ludwig made. And um, the advantage to having it twisted is actually stronger. It's pretty strong and it's flexible. Uh, and it looks really nice. So maybe at a later time we'll do that. But these are pretty time consuming to make. So I'll show you a couple of things on making a straight stick that will work well with a lash that you can use to drive your animals. And like I mentioned in the video with the yokes, it's something that if you just jump in and do it, it's pretty easy. Trial and error. You might break a couple. You might screw one up, but that's okay. Just grab, grab another piece of, of wood and, and uh, try to make another one. Um, there's really no reason why anybody can't make their own equipment. And before you buy something or before you try to source something um, like a factory-made type of buggy whip or something like that, just try to make your own. It's really not hard. So there's a couple different species of woods that you can use. Um, for making the twisted sticks, like we showed you earlier, a lot of the ones, especially that I grew up making or um, the other people that I knew made, we made those out of hickory. Traditionally, goad sticks are made out of white oak. And I'm kind of nonconformist with a lot of this stuff. I think if you have a strong hardwood, you can make a stick out of different types of species of woods. I make a lot of my straight sticks, which is not traditional, out of hickory. Um, it does work well. White oak probably is easier to work with, um, but either a hickory or white oak, something equivalent with a strong straight grain works well uh, because you do want a little bit of flexibility in it as well when, after you use it. So this is a piece that um, we start with a raw log and then we take a hatchet or an ax and we split up little pieces into it. Now if you have a, a power saw or something like that, you can get um, pieces cut out that way as well. But this is what you want to end up with, it's just roughed out blank. You can see part of this has been sawed, part of it is just split, and we literally take a log and split it up that way. And try to find a nice clear piece with a lot of, without any imperfections, especially in the, the shaft of it, so that uh, it doesn't break as you use it. So here I have a raw piece of hickory. You can see it's actually got the bark on it and everything. And what we've done is we've cut it, split it into wedges, and this is how we start. And then what I want to do is I want to leave roughly about an inch. So this is about two inches and I want to leave a little over an inch. So I'm going to split it down so it's about an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half and get it as square as possible with the hatchet. bottom and you can see that I've started a flat edge. So we've got this piece off, we just split that and I'm going to square off one of the other edges. So we'll go right about here so that we square this off.
So here's our blank. This is one actually that I've run through the um, bandsaw as well, but you can, most of the time you get them just by splitting them too. So we just did this one really quickly and this will roughly get you the right shape. It doesn't have to be perfectly square. It just has to be about the right shape and then we, we uh, take it down from there. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to look for any imperfections and I have a knot here so I'm going to use this as my handle end and I'm going to get it cut roughly to the right length. My sticks are about three and a half feet usually so we'll mark it. I'll leave myself a little extra trim and then we'll just cut that to length. We cut it down to the right length and this is going to be my handle end. I'm just going to get it closer to an inch. I'm going to go about an inch and an eighth uh, wide and square it off. So that way it's a little bit easier to work uh, once we have it trimmed down. So now we have our blank cut to length and roughed out to the right dimensions. I know this is going to be my top end. This is going to be my handle. And now we just need to shape it down to the right shape. And typically we'll just make a round stick, roughly about a half inch, um, and then it bells out at the, the bottom of your handle. And there's a couple different ways that I've done this in the past. I've run them through the bandsaw and tried to take out as much material as possible, get them roughed out to the, to the appropriate shape. And I actually found it's almost easier and there's more control by just using a draw knife. So that's typically what I use as a draw knife now on all of these sticks. So we'll take down some of the sides of the first side and we'll just flip it either 90 or 180 degrees and then start taking down more of the uh, other side of the stick. Okay, so we've only been working on this for a few minutes with the draw knife and we're already down to more or less the shape that we want. I keep the handle nice and big because we'll finish that different after. So now what we're going to do is work a little bit more of it with the draw knife, but I've also got this small rasp and I'll run that up and down to make it a little bit rounder to get the shape and then we'll finish off the handle. We have rounded, gotten roughly the rounded shape with the rasp. The next thing we're going to use is some type of scraper. You can actually use, back in the old days we used to use pieces of glass or you can use uh, any type of metal scraper and we're going to smooth out the uh, edges and keep rounding it off. So after we scrape it, and we get the shape out, then we'll just take some sandpaper and start sanding it to get it nice and smooth. Once I have the stick finished, and it's pretty close to being done right now, we've scraped and sanded it, we have a nice round shape, then I start working on the handle, and there's going to be a little bit more material on the handle than I want, which is fine because we're going to take some off. I want about three quarters of an inch to a one inch handle, that's what's comfortable for me. So I'll put it in the vise and take a hand plane and I'm going to plane each side so that it's nice and flat. The other thing that you can do is you can make yourself a board and put a C-clamp at the end and hold the stick in place that way. This is just a handy jig to be able to hold it while you're planing it or working the uh, stick. We are pretty much done at this point. I still have some sanding that I need to do to take out any of the remaining imperfections. I've taken the uh, handle down so it's nice and square. We're going to cut it down a little bit shorter, finish the end. I'm also going to put this in the vise and chamfer the corners here so that it's a little bit more comfortable. We are pretty much done, so I've chamfered off this handle and made it nice and smooth with sandpaper. What I always do is put a decorative end 
on the end of the handle, you can see one here with these four points, and that serves a couple of purposes. The first is it's decorative, but the second is it gives you a place where if you're specially teaching your animals to sidestep or you need to push them in or out, you can just tap them with that and they'll feel it and then they'll move. So we'll just scribe a couple of V's into this and cut that out. And then go from there. I'm just gonna take a coping saw and cut down the scribe marks that I made. You can do this a couple different ways. You can use power tools, obviously, or a bandsaw works really well for this. But right now my bandsaw blade is broken, so we're gonna do it this way. And there we are. Uh, I still need to sand it down and get it a little bit smoother, but you could use this as a goad stick right now. Uh, but we're going to go a uh, next step and we're going to put a leather keeper on the end so that we can use it with a, uh, with a lash. So let me show you how to do that next. So for the keepers, you can use braided string, but a good quality leather works best. So we're just going to cut a strip of leather out of this old boot. Oh, about five or six inches or so. We have the keeper cut out and we want it to overlap an inch or inch and a quarter or so and that's going to keep our lash on. We're going to hold the keeper on using two things. First is string, so we're going to do some half inches and hold it in place. But we're also going to use some epoxy. You can use uh, contact cement or another type of really good glue. I have this Delf, uh, Devcon um, two-part two epoxy. You can get it at any hardware store. It's really, really good and it hardens fairly quickly and is super strong. So uh, we're going to mix this up and then I'll show you how to put the keeper on. Before I mix the epoxy though, I'm going to cut out two pieces of string. The first one is going to be about a foot long. We're going to fold it in half and I'll show you what we do with that after. So just leave that set aside. And then the second one we want about three to four feet long. And we're going to make a loop, tie off a loop on one end. And this is what we're going to use to actually hold the keeper on. And we're going to put a little bit of coat of that epoxy on the end, last few inches of the stick. And you can be pretty liberal with it. We can always take some off after. And then we're going to take our short piece of string and loop it. And we want the top of the loop right here sticking out the top with the rest of the string just hanging out the bottom and that's another reason why we want to have epoxy on there so that we hold it in place and then we're going to take our keeper if I can find it our leather piece alright we found our leather keeper it fell on the ground here we're going to stick this like this around right onto the end your string here that we just looped will go on the side where the stick is exposed and then we're going to just put the leather on the other side and then what we do is we put a little bit more glue on the outside of that leather like so and it'll pop off this is where you need about three hands to do this but you'll see how we get it done here in a minute and then I'm going to take the long piece of string and start tying it off alright so you can see my leather keeper kind of fell apart but that's okay we're going to tie it back off so I'm taking the, the straight end of the string putting it through the little loop and we're going to start at the bottom of that leather keeper. And again, starting this is the hard part. Once you get it going, it's not bad. We're going to get this nice and snug. Again, keeping that loop of string kind of free and off to the side, just like this. So we have to be careful in the beginning. All right, so we're going to start at the bottom of that keeper. And the first step is just to snug this up. So now we have it started, and what I'm going to do is all the way up from the bottom, I'm going to do a bunch of half hitches. And that's going to keep this nice and tight. I'm going to snug it as tight as I can. 
and continue to do half hitches all the way up. I want my strings nice and stacked with one another here so there's no major gaps. So I'm going to keep an eye on it all the way around, make sure that I'm also not stacking my string on top of one another. And we're just going to go all the way up to the top with these half hitches. Done the half hitches all the way to the top. My leather is curled around a little bit. I like to try to keep it as centered as possible, but it moved, but that's fine. So now to finish this, if you remember, we left this tail hanging out the bottom with the loop on the top. I'm gonna to take the end of the string that I did my half hitches on. I'm gonna run it through this loop, take a pair of pliers, and I'm gonna grab the tails here at the end, and we're gonna pull all of this through, and that's what's gonna tie it together. And we've got it starting to poke all the way through, so now I've got my loop and I can just grab it and pull that string the rest of the way down. And that keeps it nice and tight. And now it's permanently on there. We can always take a little bit more glue if we want, just put it on the outside of the string just to make sure it's secure. And then we'll trim off our tails. And that's it. That's how to make a stick or how I make one. I'll do a video later on on some twisted sticks, but this is a really simple and easy way of doing one that is practical. These sticks do last a long time. If you want to uh, make them last a little bit longer, you can wrap them in electrical tape and they won't have as a much of a tendency to break and you've got the keeper on there. I'm not going to show you on this one because it's still wet, but here's one that I finished earlier. And if we want to put the lash on, we just put the loop of the lash over the stick through the keeper and then that's how it stays on and for me using a stick and a lash is much more effective with animals you can reach them in a lot of different spots you can twist this and twirl it through the air you don't even have to touch your animals they'll feel the air around them and what what uh, command you're trying to get them to do and to me it's just much easier to drive them that way so I hope you enjoyed that we'll be putting together more videos again shortly uh, for you so that uh, you have some other things to look at and if you have any suggestions on things that you'd like to see please let us know and feel free to comment and email us